but the Hubble Space Telescope is broken. Well, sort of. It's a bit broken. It's not like broken broken, but little bits of it do keep breaking. To be specific, the part I'm talking about right now is one of the gyroscopes that Hubble uses to steer and point, and it's malfunctioned several times over the last few months. As a result, NASA has just made the announcement that they are permanently switching Hubble to using a one gyroscope operating mode. In 2009, during the most recent and final astronaut servicing mission of Hubble, six brand new gyroscopes were installed on the telescope. These gyroscopes do two things. Principally, they're part of the system used to steer and point the telescope making them an essential part of the telescope. Hubble doesn't use thrusters to steer and point. It doesn't have any thrusters, but instead it uses rotating gyroscopes to do the same job. If we can't point at interesting things and keep pointing at them stably and for long enough, then the telescope becomes pretty much useless. The other thing that gyroscopes do is measure something called the slew rate of Hubble. This is how fast the telescope changes position over time, or how fast it rotates to look at a new object. Until recently, three of those six gyroscopes installed in 2009 were still operational and working well. To be honest with you, gyroscopes do tend to be a part of Hubble that fails more often. It's usually due to wear and tear of thin wires, called flex leads, that carry power in and data out of the mechanism. That thin lead passes through a thick fluid inside the gyroscope, and over time the thin wire can begin to corrode and can physically bend or even break. Over the last 34 years of Hubble's life, 8 out of a total of 22 gyroscopes have failed for this reason. This is why, on each of the five servicing missions that saw astronauts visit the telescope between 1993 and 2009, one of the most common fixes has been to replace the units that contain the gyros, known as the Rate Sensing Units, or RSUs. For example, between Hubble's launch in 1990 and the first servicing mission in 1993, three of the gyroscopes had already failed. Each RSU contains a pair of gyros, so Hubble has three RSUs containing the six gyroscopes. On that first servicing mission, astronauts replaced two of the three RSUs, returning the telescope to a full six operational gyros. At that time, Hubble needed three gyroscopes to point and steer, and until now, three has remained the preferred amount operational to maintain optimal efficiency. The other three, when they were working, were just backups. For the last few years, we've been down to only three working, and now a fourth has been going wrong too. It's been displaying something that we call saturation. This happens when it's meant to measure the slew of the telescope, that's how fast it's moving and rotating. But no matter how fast the telescope actually is moving, it always returns the maximal value. This sets off some metaphorical alarm bells that the telescope is moving too fast and could be out of control, and the telescope is automatically placed into a safe mode. This pauses all scientific observations, keeps the telescope safe and protected, and it basically just sits there in space waiting for new instructions from the ground. Hubble's handlers have then been able to reset the electronics of the gyro and return normal readings for now, but this has proved to only be a temporary solution. The problem has recurred several times now, and when it happened again in May 2024, that was the final straw. Luckily, there are already procedures in place to operate Hubble with just two or even just one gyroscope, and the difference between one and two gyros is negligible, so the plan is now to reconfigure Hubble to use just one gyro going forward, with one spare just in case there are further failures. These procedures for using Hubble with less than three gyros were developed over 20 years ago at this stage. I think this was largely done because in October 1999, a fourth gyroscope malfunctioned on Hubble, and the telescope could no longer collect scientific data as it needed three gyros, but it only had two left working. It literally sat in a safe mode for a whole month, waiting for the next servicing mission, which handily installed six brand new gyros. The transition to single gyro mode will involve reconfiguring both the spacecraft and ground-based systems to use one gyro, and will also involve assessing the impact this one gyro mode will make on future observations. The actual transition is expected to take just a few weeks, and Hubble should be back to scientific observations very soon. It's definitely not the end, but Hubble is just taking a little break. This has been done before. Between 2005 and 2009, Hubble operated in a two gyro mode, and it even did a brief test stint in 2008 in one gyro mode to show that it could work. 
During this time, they also demonstrated that the quality of scientific observations was the same in one and two gyro modes, and this seems to be the best plan to extend Hubble's life. That's not to say this is a perfect situation though. Three gyros would be better, but it simply isn't possible any longer. Hubble is getting old. Entering a reduced gyro mode, as we are about to do, will slightly decrease the productivity of the telescope. It will take longer to slew and lock onto scientific targets. It won't be able to have quite as much flexibility as to where it can point at any given time, and it will not be able to target anything closer to Earth than Mars. Although that last point is very rare for Hubble to try and do anyway, so that one's not a huge deal. According to this report published a few years ago about potential impacts of using just one or two gyros, they predict there could be as much as a 15% drop in scientific output from the telescope. Some observations that require particularly fast response times from the telescope could also be delayed, and overall Hubble may see about a 25% drop in productivity. I'll link to this report in the description of this video, along with some other links that talk about Hubble's gyros and how they work. So is this ideal? No, of course it's not. But at least Hubble will still be operational and available for science. In theory, it could continue to work well into the 2030s in this configuration, although more failing gyros and its gradual drop in altitude will be the most likely culprit for finally ending the telescope's operations in the future. Hopefully that's a long way off, but it will be sad when it happens. There are currently no plans to send astronauts to service Hubble again to do repairs that could include fitting new gyroscopes and boosting its altitude. That said, recently billionaire entrepreneur and astronaut Jared Isaacman did offer to fund and lead a private mission to Hubble on a SpaceX rocket in order to do repairs and servicing like we just mentioned. NASA have now responded to this, and after a reasonably long investigation into the idea, they basically said thanks, but no thanks. They don't seem to want anyone else to touch the telescope. The reasons they cite were the risk of private astronauts damaging or breaking the telescope. Or, chillingly, the risk of mission failure resulting in the bodies of dead astronauts tethered to the telescope, which is a really weird thing to actually read in an official report. At some point though, as Hubble ages more and more, you'd expect the risks to eventually be worth the chance to extend the life of this grey telescope. Well, that's what I think, but NASA may well value the prestige of handling Hubble too highly, and only want NASA astronauts to have the honour of doing so. I can't predict the future, but I think it's unlikely they'll greenlight this mission. However, if Isaacman did fund this mission and it was successful, it would save hundreds of millions of dollars for NASA, and it could give us another decade or more of Hubble. That said, it wouldn't be easy. SpaceX doesn't have anything like the space shuttle that it can easily open up to space to allow easy spacewalks to work on the telescope. None of its rockets or modules even have an airlock, and currently, a spacewalk has never been done from a SpaceX vehicle. This is likely to be achieved soon, but a mission to Hubble would still require a lot of planning and work before it's even possible, let alone greenlit. I've actually wanted to discuss this Isaacman proposal and NASA's response on the channel for a little while now, but I haven't got round to mentioning it until now. If you'd like a deeper dive into all of that in another video, then do let me know in the comments, and if there is demand, I'll see what I can do. For now though, thanks a lot for watching this video, and do feel free to leave me any Hubble questions or comments down below. Until next time, stay safe team, I'll see you soon. Bye!